Hello and welcome back to Mirror Interpretation to the Roro. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. We are continuing to read from this book, The Mastery of Love by Don Miguel Ruiz. We're going to read a portion of a chapter called The Dream Master. Everyone has a price and life respects that price. But that price is not measured in dollars or in gold, it's measured in love. More than that, it is measured in self-love. How much you love yourself, that is your price, and life respects that price. When you love yourself, your price is very high, which means your tolerance for self-abuse is very low. It's very low because you respect yourself. You like yourself the way you are, and this makes your price higher. If you don't like things about yourself, the price is little lower. Sometimes self-judgment is so strong that people need to be numb just to be themselves. If you don't like a person, you can walk away from that person. If you don't like a group of people, you can walk away from those people. If you don't like yourself, it doesn't matter where you go, you are right there. To avoid being with yourself, you need to take something to numb you to take your mind away from yourself. Perhaps some alcohol is going to help. Perhaps, perhaps some drugs will help. Perhaps eating, just eat, eat, eat. The self-abuse can get much worse. Those are people who really feel self-hatred. They are self-destructive killing themselves little by little because they don't have the courage to kill, themself, to kill themselves fast. If you observe self-destructive people, you will see they attract people just like them. What do we do if we don't like ourselves? We try to get numb with alcohol and forget our suffering. That's the excuse we use. We are, where are we going to get alcohol? We, get, we go to the bar to drink and guess who is going to be there? People just like us, who try to avoid themselves also, who also try to get numb. We get numb together, we start talking about our suffering and we understand each other very well. We even start to enjoy it. We understand each other perfectly because we vibrate in the same frequency. We're both being self-destructive. Then I hurt you, you hurt me. A perfect relationship in hell. What happens when you change? For whatever reason, you no longer need the alcohol. It's okay now to be with yourself and you really enjoy it. You no longer drink, but you have the same friends and everybody is drinking. They get numb, they, get, uh, they start getting happier, but you can clearly see that their happiness is no real, not real. What they, can call, what they call happiness is a rebellion against their own emotional pain. In that happiness, they are so hurt that they have fun hurting other people and hurting themselves. You no longer fit in. And of course, they resent you because you are no longer like, that, like them. Hey, you are rejecting me because you no longer drink with me, because you don't get high with me. Now you have to make a choice. You can step back or you can go to another level of frequency and meet people who finally accept themselves like you do.
you find there is another realm of reality, the new way of a relationship, and you no longer accept certain kinds of abuse. That was the last portion of the Dream Master, guys. Well, um, I don't want to say self-abuse because I, I don't think that uh, self-destructive, yes, but I don't want to say self-abuse. I think people who have those type of tendencies to to do these type of things are usually people who were trained by their parents to accept abuse, to accept self-destructiveness, also to do and also to need. There is uh, some children, especially boys, they learn at a very young age that if they hurt themselves, they're going to receive uh, love or affection from the mother. And they are very um, profound tendency in older people to like teenagers or young males that they will have those tendency. And the only reason in psychology, if you read a few books, People who damage themselves, like break legs or or something, like children, they're always trying to get attention, particularly boys trying to get attention to uh, the mother. I remember my sister would do something like that uh, to get the attention of my father. She would fail on the rocks and cut her skin. Uh, because when my father would sue her, he would be very affectionate, which he would never be at all. So my sister uh, will go to the tree and purposely jump uh, to hurt herself, like with the head down. And I remember I feel very bad. But now seeing that as an adult, I mean, I was four or five. Uh, my sister would do this very purposely. She would also do something else. She would refuse to eat until my father doesn't beg her and he will beg her in a very lovely manner otherwise he would never be affectionate so she would manipulate my father with self-harm that's why I think she's sick I mean I don't think I'm 100% sure that she is very sick lady and I'm sure that those manipulative, tenden manipulative tendencies that she developed as a child she only raffinate and continue using as adult and this is why I stay away from her and another thing I want to say about uh, people that drink um, I, I don't think that people drink because they are judging themselves no a lot of people are uh, accepting the judgment of others and they drink to forget the horrible, abusing things the others did to them. I don't think uh, self-harming as, as it is, drinking or using drugs, is just because somebody likes it. And, and they just don't want to stay with themselves. No, people use substances, drugs, alcohol, and anything else to forget the abuse that they receive from others. This is the truth. I don't agree with this portion over here. Uh, no, it's not to avoid being with yourself, but is avoiding to feeling the pain. Yes, because when you are numb, you no longer feel the pain that others cause you. Yes, alcohol is damaging and yes, indeed, being hangover is not fun. However, um, this is not... The, the root of the problem. The root of the problem is the abuse that somebody persistently received for so long that led them to need that numbing drug or medicine in order to forget. And the reason that somebody cannot stand with themselves is not because they don't accept their legs, feet, hands. No, they cannot stand the pain that they feel and only when numb marijuana or alcohol or something else uh, they can avoid that pain I don't know I, I don't think that healthy person 100% loves everything about themselves uh, I don't want to say love but maybe it's like there are parts of us that part of me that I don't like but I still accept it right so um 
don't think it's because we don't like ourselves. I think people use drugs because they don't like the hate and and the uh, pain. And the pain that somebody could feel inside is bigger than than liking yourself or not liking. We don't like what we feel, not the legs, the fingers, the hair, or the eyes. We don't like the feeling of hatred. That's what we don't like. Um, and we go to the bar. Um, so th this portion is like kind of grotesquely expressing the fact that when you change your hobbies or when you change your uh, your frequency, you're not going to vibe with the same people. This is true. Uh, I don't think that person who stopped drinking is resented by others. I don't think so. I haven't seen uh, anybody who actually stopped using drugs that has been resented or not accepted. I haven't seen that. This again is a little bit not realistic. Um, and no, people who drink are not always happy. It is another fantasy here. People who dreams are very, very sad most of the times. I don't think uh, drinking makes you happy. But hey, with all the respect, happiness as a revelation of their own emotional pain. I, I think that when you drink, you numb this pain, but it's you don't become happy. You don't become content. No, this is just a fantasy. They have fun hurting other people. I don't believe in this. I think that sadistics, sadic, sadists or sociopath people are very few. They are indeed people who are sick, sadists, sadists or sociopaths or psychopaths who... But sadism is particularly there people that have enjoyed degree of pain, degree of inflicting pain in others. They enjoy the suffering in others, but that's a small percentage that they feel pleasure when they feel somebody else suffer. This does not come from alcohol. This comes from mental health disease. So I don't agree here with this portion that have fun uh, hurting others because you drink. No, you have fun hurting others because you're sociopath and you're sick and you enjoy seeing others suffering. It's called sadism. So if you're a sadist, drinking or not drinking, you remain sadist. And and I work, I do therapy for children that are sadistic, they, that they're sadist, excuse me. I was working with this boy, he was like five, I think, and um, he uh, killed his puppy in in such a way that the whole family is in shock and they don't understand why and and we're doing therapy with this little boy and he said that he likes it that is so much fun for him and he would go in detail and describe uh, how he killed the puppy so sadism has nothing to do with alcohol or drugs or you you are born sadistic and yes the drugs alcohol can chase that but they are not a result they are not the root of the problem the root of the problem is your mental health illnesses which in this case was a little bit of sociopathy in this little boy um And no, I don't think people who st stop smoking marijuana uh, get rejected by their friends. I do have a lot of friends who enjoy smoking, sniffing, and so on and so on. And the fact that I don't do it is not a problem for them. We can watch a movie, talk, travel, whatever it is. There is no problem with me not using or with them wanting to smoke marijuana. I don't, this is not very realistic. Uh, and no, if you have a free will, people can get 
many substances if i go to mexico they try to get the peyote and all these other things mushrooms and so on and so on if you go to party to ibiza you can take the pills the lsd msd and so and so on you can have fun without the drugs i do party often i don't take any drugs so this is a bs that you have to be high sorry for some reason my phone ring it should have not so i disagree with that however there is something about the frequency people who spend their time smoking or drinking alcohol cannot be successful because all the money that they do goes to alcohol on drugs this is the truth their interest is there their goal whatever they do is focused into getting high you cannot be successful if you are busy with doing these things and not because the smoking marijuana it lowers your vibration no I believe that the problem with smoking and, and drinking and getting high is not the fact that you use something whatever it is the substance but is the effect of it whatever substance you use is gonna be a hangover is gonna be a headache is gonna be a crash down in any drugs it's gonna bring this hormonal not equilibrium in your body and you're gonna feel like a truck runs you over or run you over and when you're in this very exhausted uh, chemical disbalance in your body you cannot be productive this is why you cannot be successful however um, alcohol is not always self-abuse uh, there is ways to use alcohol as a healing I don't want to say use industrial quantities of course but there is many cultures where alcohol is used to cure flu and other things it's just antiseptic and so and so on this is a different theory but alcohol it doesn't always mean vibration of self damage and self abuse actually if you drink one cup of alcohol a week is considered healthy and I don't say hard liquor I'm talking about wine if you want to read about it you can do said that I hope you guys get inspired write me your comments below